Kia ora koutou, uh, ko Janice Lee Tāko Ngoa. Um, my name is Janice Lee and uh, I'm the project leader and founder of Kohakai. We're an organisation based in Invercargill and we work with people with disabilities, uh, giving them the opportunity to learn the life skills that will support them towards uh, employment, uh, but also that are transferable into their own lives to help them to live uh, a more successful or a more uh, fulfilling uh, life. Um, so that's what we do. Um, this is my uh, third blog um, or video log. Uh, the first one was about um, understanding the value of appreciation. The second was just explaining about how difficult it is for people with disabilities to live uh, on the sort of budget that they do, uh, you know, when they live as part of the supported living um, system that we run here in, in New Zealand. Um, and this time I just wanted to talk about uh, abilities, sort of thinking about uh, not what people's limitations are, rather thinking about what, what they can do, um, helping them to recognise things that may well support them to, to have the skills to be able to uh, build capacity and uh, find opportunities for employment. So uh, I'd been working with people for some time and I'd recognised the fact that they needed to, we needed to find a way to support them to live better and, and so I was kind of formulating this idea in my head. Uh, I had started a recreation group and um, the idea being that we would, uh, it was a social thing, was an opportunity to, for people to interact socially. And in talking to these people I said, you know, what is it that you're wanting to achieve for yourself? And they said, well, we want to be healthier. We want to make new friends, and I'm talking about friends who aren't paid to spend time with us. Because, you know, I fall into that category. Um, I was paid at that time to support these people, to, to, uh, um, to be with them. It was, it was a role that I was playing, you know. It, it, was, it formed part of my life, but it was something that I was paid to do. Would I have associated with these people outside of work? I don't know. Um... I never had before. It wasn't that I didn't want to, it's just that I didn't know they existed. Because you know what? People with disabilities, they are invisible people. They're the people when you're walking through the shops with your mum, you know, this is me, 50, nearly 60 years ago, um, walking through the shops with your mum and you see somebody that looks different or you hear something that makes you look at somebody and mum goes, drags you on the arm and says, don't stare, that's rude. And so you look away and because that's the polite thing to do. And that transfers through your life so that as an adult, you're walking through the supermarket and you see somebody and you think, hmm, disability, and you carry on. It's, they're there, but they're not there. They are invisible people. And how do we make these people visible? Because these people are wanting the same things that we do. We're, we're wanting to be able to you know, have friends of our own. We're wanting to learn new skills. We're wanting to do all the same things that everybody else does, but actually the opportunities um, are more difficult to come by. So anyway, um, I'm working in the sector and I'm looking at these people and thinking, um, where are our limitations? I know that they um, that they don't understand the the concept of of um, appreciation. I know that their budgets allow them very little flexibility around other things. And then I sort of thought back to when I was a kid, you know, when I was learning about life and things, and I was at school. And you know, when I was walking home from school, this is back in the sixties. All the way along the street, you could go. Yep, they've got sausage, they're having sausages for tea. Oh, these ones have got a roast tonight. That's so cool. You could smell all the way up the street the smells of um of of cooking when you were coming home from school at you know three thirty in the afternoon. And then I would get home and you would walk in the door and if it was a Tuesday it was fabulous because Tuesday was baking day, and Mum would try and get all the real cool stuff made in the morning so that it could be iced and in the boxes in the in the tins and and hidden from us. You know, she used to hide all the, all the good baking. I knew where it was. I could find it. That's another story. But anyway, um, so you had all of these smells and it was about nutrition. And I was thinking about the sorts of foods that uh, that we would have. And I thought, you know, 
it doesn't have to be flesh. It just needs to be the food that I raised my children on. You know, meatloaf, fish pie, braised sausages, onion gravy, savoury mince, curry mince, um, steak, uh, beef, beef stew, um, a roast. You know, all of these things. Um, it's, it, we don't think of it as being flesh. In fact, it's not, but it's cooked fresh. And then I went into, um, you know, when I was going and, and, and supporting some of these people, I went into one lady's house. Now, these people predominantly lived in their own homes, quite often lived alone in their own homes. So it, it was something of a conundrum to me when I walked into this lady's house that I was supporting. And I said, you know, what have you got sorted out for tea tonight? And she says, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And I said, well, what are you making? And she says, oh, no, I'm not allowed to cook. What do, you, what do you mean you're not allowed to cook? You live alone. This is your home. What do you mean you're not allowed to cook? And she's, oh, I can't be relied on. You know, they won't, they, they don't trust me to cook alone. Um, so I'm not allowed to cook. And so this lady was banned from cooking in her own home because she wasn't reliable. To be fair, you know, I went into her kitchen that was um, scorched, melted, a lot of stuff that that you could see what they were talking about but anyway um so somebody had given her a crock pot so that was to be her way of cooking for herself so in the morning she would get out of bed now talking about budgets she could only afford real basic stuff and she didn't know how to cook it anyway so she would get a couple of frozen sausages out of pre-cooked sausages and throw them into the crock pot and she would um, get a handful of frozen mixed vegetables and she'd chuck that into the pot. She'd grab a couple of spuds and she'd think, yeah, I'm not going to peel them because yuck, you know, they're going to be horrible anyway. So she'd throw them in there. This is eight o'clock in the morning when she got up, she'd throw them into the crock pot um, and then she would um, let them stew away all day. Dinner for her was about four o'clock in the afternoon. And at four o'clock in the afternoon, she goes and has a look at this and smells it. And, oh, God, that's that's awful. I'm not eating that crap. So she throws it away and she goes down the chip and gets $2 worth of chips. So as a result, when I'm starting to work with this lady, she is really over, over you know, um, obese and really unhealthy. She's had every kind of surgery that you could think of. Um, and she's really, and she's got all of these medications that she's got to have for all of these different conditions. Um, and this is her lifestyle. She has no money to buy good quality food, you know. And, and so I thought we have to address the fundamental thing is what are we able to do? What can we do together? And so quite often I would start cooking with the people that I was supporting. I was supporting eight, eight different people. And what I found after a time was that I was going into this person's house and I was cooking with them and this person's house, eight people. And every week I was cooking with all of them. And they would, I would go into their home and they would say, oh, what are we making this week? And I'd think, what did we make last week? Because I was doing the same thing with everybody. I could see that there was a problem and what we needed to do to, to, to address that problem. And so I started cooking with people. And so I'd be peeling and they'd be peeling. And I thought, there is no reason why these people cannot be cooking their own meals. You know, we have to find a way to do to support people to be more functional by looking after their diet and we have to en enable and empower them to do it for themselves. So that was my challenge. How to find a way to support people to be able to achieve better nutrition by themselves, for themselves, on the budgets that they had. Let's see where this is going to take us.